Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back, of course, to the Time Bomb channel. And uh, thanks as always for your time and for your view. And um, we're going a little uh, EDC everyday carry today. Um, I featured a few uh, County Com products uh, before on the channel, and uh, just to uh, satisfy the haters, no, I don't work with them. Um, yeah, sure, if they ever want to send me some uh, some samples, uh, then yeah, I'm all in. But for right now, I'm paying for myself. Um, this then, obviously, as the vid name suggests, is the uh, County Com Embassy Pen. And uh, this uh, version is called Rev 5. It's uh, full titanium uh, with a couple of uh, design spec changes over the previous versions. The first iterations of these uh, pens, I believe, came out in uh, 2012. And they keep then updating the uh, colors, metals, um, etc. Copper, aluminium, uh, right up until this one was released, I think in June, um, is the Rev 5. There's a suggestion that it was as a limited run of these. Um, is obviously, as you can see at the top then, the TI-413, and then that cage ref, which is 5, uh, 5VKB6. Um, my understanding is that that might refer to the procurement lots for the government, but suggesting that then they are surplus. Um, checking today on the website, they've, they've actually uh, sold out, suggesting that there's a new load coming in in August of this year. Um, but being a Brit, um, I, I'm, I'm not really that conversant with the uh, government surplus of, of the states and, and how County Com, you know, supply products or, or, or not. Um, so if you can add any background to that aspect of, of them, uh, that would be really appreciated because I, I wasn't able to find anything out. So obviously it's coming in a full titanium body, meaning that these pens are going to outlive, um, you know, all of us uh, watching here today. Um they weigh, this one weighs in at 65 grams uh, with an ink fill, and that's around 10 grams lighter than, say, perhaps our uh, G-Shock 5600, just for sp some perspective. Um, just to give you some additional perspective then, um, I've got a Smith Wesson uh, Polymill uh, pen here. This is uh, aluminium, so that only then weighs in at 40 grams, and then slightly heavier. Uh, then I've got the uh, stainless steel uh, bastion uh, bolt action here. Um, yeah, I mean, just a delicious uh, fidget. God, you don't want to get one of these when you're sitting on a Zoom meeting in uh, on mute. There's nothing to stop you from uh, just clicking that thing all bloody day long. But anyway, coming back to the pens. Personally, I thought that the uh, that the Rev 5 in titanium would would be a little bit lighter and to put that into context in, into context um so as i say the uh, the bastion stainless steel weighs in at 76 grams but the titanium version of this only comes in at 45 grams um so yeah it's you know there's 20 grams worth of of, of disappearance there so so for some people with smaller hands that might be a consideration the length of these things then is five and a quarter inches and then it's just around half an inch in diameter. So very, very easy in hand and in pocket. Um, the You've got a sort of a semi satin grain uh, to that pen to the clip here. And please note as well that that's stainless steel, not, not the titanium. This version then featuring that new version, uh, new knurling on here. So they've gone for the uh, the full pineapple grenade effect. Um, I think it looks brilliant. It really does catch the light. Um, and it also feels fantastic in hand. However, I did see a review the other day that somebody was talking about it being sort of abrasive and uncomfortable. I, I don't get that at all. Um, the uh, the section on the on the hand on the finger section here as well doesn't doesn't bother me. It's something else to get your fingers into. Um, as I say, I really don't have any issue with it um, at all. But again, if that is your if that is a concern and you're looking for a sleeker model, uh, well then plump for uh, something like the uh, the Bastion here. Um, because yeah, I mean that's a sleek as a sleek thing. It's so sleek, in fact, that you can you can't see the break um, here. Fascinates me that little things please little minds. So let's move on. Um, as I say, so I like that pineapple finishing. I think uh, both visually and in hand, it works really very well. And I don't see it as you know something that's going to be pulling the skin off your delicate pinkies anytime soon. It might rub your jeans, uh, but really, I don't see it as, as an issue. Opening it up then, uh, so one of the things for this one that I've picked up on is that the uh, new refills are the uh, Schmitz. 
um, which have been chosen, I think, because they've got some quite big tolerances in the sense that they're useful between minus 30 and plus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's around minus 30 to 120 degrees in old money. So yes, suitable in most uh, out outdoor environments that people, you know, most of us are going to need to write in. My understanding, though, then, is that these new versions are now limited due to that internal size in here and that you can't now use the uh, the Fisher refills. Um, I don't have one to check. Um, so, again, I, that, that's just, uh, just something that I've read. So, again, please do uh, correct me if I'm wrong there because, yeah, clearly refills, um, you know, if you prefer gel, uh, gel, um, gel pens, etc., is going to be a concern. In hand, though, I mean, yeah, it write it writes brilliantly, even even for me with my dodgy handwriting. But it's possibly less of a a tactical pen than say the uh, the the the, the polymill from Smith Wesson doesn't have that. Obviously, this one then featuring the you know the your, your glass breaker on the end, um, heavy heavy base there to get into your hand. This one perhaps more of a cabotton, um, if if that is uh, you know of interest to you. But as a robust EDC pen that looks unique and is going to last forever, um, I think it's absolutely beautiful. On earlier releases of these, again, I recall seeing comments about the lack of a uh, uh, of, of screw thread. Screw, excuse me, screw threading around the top there, so that when you, your cap is off, you can pop it on. Uh, this one, in fact, goes even further. Uh, there's no way that that's going on there. It did elicit some quite interesting responses, suggesting to the fact that if you lend somebody a pen. You hang on to the cap and thus preventing, you know, wannabe kleptos uh, from, from running off with your pen. Um, yeah, that works for me. Again, by contrast, the Smith Wesson does feature uh, that screw um, screw threading on the rear. However, I find that when the cap is screwed on the rear, it imbalances the pen that much uh, that when writing, it, I, I just find the pen unusable. So I never bother with it um, and just will use the pen like that. And I don't know, you put the pen in your, you put the cap in your other hand or you put it down and I don't know. I don't have issues with losing things like that. Um, to me, it just goes back on. So I don't see there being any issue with this one either. Um, again, a few years back with these early ones, I think they sort of peaked, peaked a little bit of interest around, you know, them having a secret function or something like that. And, you know, there's a lot of commentary about it, which is why I'll, I'll, I'll reference it here. So basically what used to happen then is that you could, you could pop this back into here and thus create a, uh, a stubby and then um, leave uh, this, you know, as your uh, an emergency shot glass or a receptacle for, for, for some other uh, other aspects. Um, I don't know, you use it however you want to. For me, that's not really uh, <laughs> an interest. And as you can see, they've actually done, done away for the, the th threading size uh, inside now is so different that it doesn't work anyway. Um, for me, more curious though, is actually why they've chosen the name Embassy for these things. Um, because if you look at uh, other pens that you might find in embassies or government offices, etc., they tend to look a little different to these ones. So I'm just curious to know who these were designed for or who these are designed for and who they are given to. If you know, um, that would be brilliant to hear because, again, um, I, I wasn't able to find out anything uh, around that. Additionally, if you've got any suggestions for other EDC pens that you think I should look at, do please drop a comment down below because I'm getting more and more interested in these uh, riding tools. The pen is mightier than the sword, apparently. Um, so it'd be great to hear of uh, some of your other favourites. Thanks, as always, for your time and for your view. And, of course, until the next bit, this is your host, the Bombardier, signing off. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.